G'day nerds, welcome back to the channel for another math lesson. Today we're doing a revision video for the Standard 2 Maths course on the topic of investments and loans. Looking at some past HSE questions, starting with some easy ones and then building up towards the more challenging band 5, 6 questions. I'm um, going to try and get one of these done for every topic for the rest of the year, so if that tickles your fancy, please subscribe to stay in the loop on future videos. Okay, the way to get the best value out of these videos is to um, see the question, pause, try it yourself, and then I run through my solution and we see if we're on the same page or if there's something I did that you could um, improve on. Okay, so up first we have a band three question from the 2021 HSC. Multiple choice, we've got an appliance valued at 2467 and it's depreciating 15% each year based on the declining balance method. Okay, two types of depreciation in this course. Uh, one of them is simple interest in reverse and the other one is compound interest in reverse, which is the declining balance method. Uh, the formula is on your reference sheet if you are a bit forgetful. Question is, what is the salvage value today to the nearest dollar? So what's the value of the appliance now um, after three years? Okay, so we're using the declining balance um, formula, which looks like this. Again, on the reference sheet if you're not sure. S for salvage value, um, V for the initial value, R is the rate of depreciation, and N is the time period. So if we sub in our values, we're starting with 2467. Our depreciation rate is 15%, or you can write 0 0.15. And we're doing three years, so the power of three. That gets us straight away to our answer of about 1515, which is option D. So yeah, straight away, it tells you which formula to use. Formula's on the sheet, so it should be a free one mark for you if you know how to read, which I do. On to a band four question from the same paper, 2021. We've got $2.45 for a car to travel on a toll road. However, due to inflation, this is gonna increase by 3% each year. How much will it cost in five years time? Okay, so uh, the thing to recognize for this question, which is why it's a band four, so slightly higher than a two or a three, is that when you see a inflation question, your brain should straight away say future value formula. Okay, prices increasing due to inflation is mathematically similar to prices increasing due to compound interest, okay? If you just find 3% of $2.45 and add that on five times, you're doing simple interest, which is not gonna get you the right answer, okay? Every time our price increases, the 3% increases each year as well. So as long as you recognize inflation means future value formula, you're probably gonna get two marks here. So here's our future value formula. Um, our present value is 2.45, our rate of increase is 3%, and our time period is five years. So subbing in the value, we get a new value after five years of about $2.84. Okay, so the takeaway is train your brain to read inflation and think future value, formula, and then you're good to go. Okay, another band four, a bit of a relic from the 2008 HSC. We've got a TV depreciating by 15% per annum. Uh, two years after it was purchased, it had depreciated to a value of 2023 using the declining balance method. What was the purchase price of the TV? Okay, so in the first question, um, we were finding a value after depreciation. This question's a bit harder because we're finding the price before depreciation. We're still using the same formula, declining balance method, but this time, instead of finding the salvage value, we have the salvage value and we're trying to find the initial value. Okay, so here's our formula. Um, the values we're gonna sub in, the salvage value, which is the value after the depreciation, is 2023. We have a depreciation rate of 15% per annum and we're looking at a calculation over two years. So subbing an info in, and this is the equation we are trying to solve for V0. Okay, so you can solve this by trial and error if you're not too good with your algebra, but algebra is the best way to get to a direct answer. We're thinking of solving this like an equation, and on the right-hand side, we have the variable we're trying to find being multiplied by this bracket, okay? Keep in mind, this bracket is just a number, okay? So when you're solving an equation and you're trying to get rid of a number that's multiplying, all you need to do is divide. Okay, so we divide the right-hand side to get rid of the one minus 15% to the power of two. Divide the left-hand side as well, and there we have rearranged the equation to make the initial value of the subject. We can evaluate this with a calculator, and we end up with a value around 2,800. Okay, so use your formula. Um, be confident with rearranging formulas because it's a really common thing that's assessed in the HSC. So you need to get your algebra skills up to scratch if you want to reach those higher bands. Okay, up next, we've got a band five question from the 2014 HSC. We've got um, Chandra and Sasha uh, plan to have 20 grand in an investment account, 15 years for some university fees. Interest rate will be 3% per annum, but it's compounded monthly. Okay, as soon as you read compounded monthly, it tells you two things. 
first of all, it tells you we're using the compound interest formula, aka the future value formula. Second thing it tells you that all our calculations need to be in terms of months, okay? Because that's when our interest is being recalculated. So instead of years, we need to be working in months. Calculate the amount that they will need to deposit into the account now in order to achieve their plan. Okay, so again, we are finding the, um, the value at the end of the uh, interest because we know what we want, we want to get. We want to find out what the initial value is. So it's kind of like the last question where instead of finding the answer, we have the answer, we're trying to find the starting value. So straight away, we have our future value formula. And now we should change our figures because we're not gonna use 3% and we're not gonna use 15 because again, we're not working in years. We need to be working in months because that is our compound period. So we'll say initially we're using 3% per annum, but we're gonna divide that by 12. Okay, so three divided by 12 is 0.25%. That goes from a yearly rate to a monthly rate. Likewise, instead of 15 years, we're gonna say, well, one year is 12 months. So 15 years will be 15 times 12 which is 180, okay? These are the two values we need to be using in our formula if we want to achieve the correct answer. Okay, subbing it all in, we know what the future value is, we know what our target is, it's 20 grand. We don't know the present value yet, the initial amount. R is 0.25% and our time period is 180. Just like with the last question, we're gonna solve this by dividing both sides by the bracket term with the power, okay? On the right-hand side, this number is multiplying with the present value we're trying to obtain the present value, so we divide, okay? Rearrange the equation, divide the left-hand side by the big bracket thingo. Feed this into the Casio and see what we get. We get a value of about 12,759, okay? Which seems like it would make sense. If you're investing about 13 grand, leaving it for 15 years, achieving 20 grand seems pretty reasonable. So we feel like this is probably the right answer. And it is, in fact, that's worth three marks right there, okay? So, first of all, know when to spot a compound period to change your interest rate and change your time period and just make sure you know which of these two you're subbing into and be confident with um, rearranging equations and that's all you really need you'll be sweet as okay and finishing off with a band six it's not a super high band six but apparently it is a low band six we've got um opening a new credit card account on first of may using it uh, on the fourth of may to buy concert tickets for 850. no further purchases a statement bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. Okay, statement shows that interest is charged at 19.75% per year, but we're compounding daily, okay? Again, as soon as you read those two words, if your brain is like mine, you think, oh, all my calculations need to be daily for this question. Okay, our time period is from the 20th of May until the 31st of May, and we're including the 20th and we're including the 31st. This is a trick that's used in a lot of um, credit card questions, which um, pulls people up if they haven't studied. If we're going from the 20th to the 31st, it feels like it should be 11 days because 20 to 31 is 11. But because we're including the 20 and we're including the 31, if you count it out on your fingers, you'll actually get uh, 12 days, okay? So when both the start and the end date are both included, which is usually the case for credit card questions, uh, the time period needs to be increased by one. So it's not 11 days of interest, it's actually 12 days. Okay, let's summarize the info into the important parts so we can have a go at the four marks. So first of all, we are getting the account on the 1st of May, but we're not using it until the 4th of May. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, okay, so uh, no further purchases or repayments, blah, 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 blah. So that really doesn't change anything. We can just scrap that. Statement for May shows the interest is charged uh, between these two days. Okay, so the May 4 is actually trying to throw you off because we're actually not calculating from the 4th of May. We're calculating from the 20th to the 31st. So first question, what is the compound interest uh, shown on, I think we're gonna summarize this a bit. Yeah, okay, there's that last line summarize. Okay, part A, what is the compound interest shown on the statement issued on the 31st of May? Okay, so compound interest, so straight away we're using our future value formula once again. Like I said, because we read compounding daily, our interest and our time periods need to be in days. So we don't want 19.75% per annum, we wanna divide this by 365 and turn it into a daily rate. Okay, yearly to daily is dividing by 365. Uh, for our number of days, like I said, we're going 20 to 31 is 11, but we add on one to make it 12 because both the start and the end date are included. So we end up with 12 days for our time period. So all these little tricks go together to make this a high band question because um, there's a lot of things to forget if you're not reading very carefully. Okay, now we substitute in. We've got our present value is how much money we put on the card, which is 850. We've got our daily interest rates and we've got a power of 12 days. 
Uh, this gets us a value of 855 and 54 cents. And the reason this is three marks is because that's not the answer. Uh, the question was, what is the compound interest? So we bought something for 850. We paid off on the card 855 and 54 cents. So that increase is your interest. So we have $5 and 54 cents in compound interest. Okay, so if you got that, well done on your three marks for a very challenging and very wordy um, band six question. Part B, minimum payment is 3% of the closing balance. This part's pretty easy. As long as you've got the correct answer from part A, you can pretty easily get one mark here. So the closing balance is um, the total value on the card, okay, which is the amount we purchase plus the interest. Uh, if we find 3% of that, we're going to get a value of 2567. So that value there gets you your one mark. So yeah, the moral of the story is for every financial maths question is know your formulas, read very carefully, and be confident with rearranging equations. As long as you do those three things, you're going to get most of these questions correct. Okay, that's it for today's uh, video. Hope you got some value from that and made you a tiny bit better at standard maths. And I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye for now, not forever.